Hogan said there were two crossroads in golf. One was from the beginning of the swing, the very first part of the golf swing, and the second part was from the top down. We're now going to start with the move away from the ball and go through the backswing action. From your setup position, where Hogan started with his waggle, his motion in his feet, his preparatory moves to the golf swing, Hogan said his first move was actually off the forward press. There was a little recoil off the forward press. Now with Hogan, that move forward was very, very small and very tough to see, but you, he could definitely feel it. So he would re recoil off that move. He also kind of keyed off a slight move of his head to the right away from the target. So he, he kind of went this way and came off the golf ball. So you want to get some kind of action that keeps you in motion. And that slight little ignition move is something that I highly recommend and something that we work on with our students at our golf schools. So that movement right there. And then what Ben Hogan wanted was a one-piece takeaway action. And he was very adamant about that. I know from working a lot with Ken Venturi, he felt this was one of the very most important moves in golf right here at the beginning of the golf swing where things worked away in one piece. Hogan said it was the hands, arms, and shoulders taking the golf club away, the upper body. You did not want any independent movements of the hands or any quick movements off the golf ball, but rather that one piece takeaway. Now part of our setup included a boxed in or braced right foot. Even if your foot is turned out to the right, you want to feel that your right leg is the brace for your backswing. Your right leg is angled inward in this fashion, and Hogan wanted to feel that that right leg stayed flexed, and then he went against this right post in his backswing. He talked of a slight lateral motion in the hips going back, a very slight move, and a major wind of the upper body. By putting your body in the correct position and address, it becomes quite easy to restrict your lower body coil. And Hogan definitely wanted that to happen. That's a big change that he made from early in his career to later in his career when he really restricted uh, the lower body action. And as he did that, he, that built a lot of tension in here, something to release going forward. So by placing your feet on the ground correctly, as we did in the last piece, that really helps you brace this right leg and restrict your hip coil, your hip turn. On the other hand, your shoulders will turn quite a bit over the braced lower body. So as you go away, the weight will go right on top of the right foot or toward the inside part of your right foot and in back toward your right heel. You would like to stay nice and level in your takeaway. And as you rotate back behind the golf ball, this part of your body, your left shoulder, will go right up against your chin. Hogan wanted a nice straight left arm. We find that there are many good players that actually have a slight bend to their left arm. However, Hogan was pretty adamant about a straight left arm. You could see that his right arm at the top of his backswing was pretty much straight down. We do see good players with some angle here and even some with a little more angle. But one thing that happens when your right arm goes up this way, it really breaks your left wrist in and really puts the club face in a really open position, which for most amateurs is a very, very bad place to be and something that we don't recommend. So if we can get your right arm a little more on this side of your body, not too deep behind you and not up in this fashion, you'll be a lot better off with your positioning of the golf club.